uh, but it is still, you know, a heart attack. Five oh five in the morning. Welcome to a day on internal medicine, cardiology. Good morning. It's about 5.45, internal medicine rotation, cardiology service. Uh, I have to talk quick, but I want to guide you guys through like what the normal day would be like uh, because I got to get out of here and try to be at the hospital by around six o'clock. So I have this sheet in front of me and normally this sheet would have all these little rows with all the patients. So you can see those little lines. That would be normally all the patients, but of course, I'm not going to show the internet every single patient I'm going to see. Uh, and usually because I'm on my sub internship, which basically is when you act like an intern, I guess, for the entire time you're there, uh, you are following and you have a little bit more things to do than you would in your third year of medical school, which is when you're more kind of in training. Of course, you're still in training in fourth year, but you have a little bit more responsibilities like responsibilities that I have now is I'm following four to six patients instead of two to three patients. Um, I'm contacting families more. I'm consulting other teams in the hospital. So sometimes when, for example, we're on the, we're in the internal medicine team, say someone suddenly has a brain bleed or something like that, we can't deal with that. So we call the uh, neurosurgery team and they kind of help us with that. Cause we don't, I mean, I don't know what to do with anything, but I definitely don't know what to do with that. Um, and then the other thing we do, which I like to do, which is really cool, which I get to do now, is I can put in orders, um, but they don't actually, they're not signed, and orders are just like prescriptions, right, in the hospital, but uh, they're not signed, they have to be signed by like a super, like a resident or a, someone who's a real doctor, right, they have to sign that, uh, so that's cool too. I think my first order that got signed was Miralax, which uh, helps you poop, so I'm proud of that one, real proud. If you are coming in, I just might go ahead and phone up my pool man and my architect so we can populate the room with just as many useless people as possible. So my morning will look like I'll have all these patients. Uh, I'll go to my computer and I'll print off the list. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the hospital and I'll be sitting down on the computer over there or at the hospital and I'll start to research what happened overnight. So overnight, there's remember, there's a team always in the hospital. So for the next kind of hour and a half, I'll look over my four to six patients, see what happened overnight. What were their vital signs? What medications did they take? Um, did anything acutely happen overnight? So sometimes RRTs happen, which, are, which means there's like a rapid response team that goes to see what happened. Uh, and then you have to write all that down. I like to start writing out the lab reports so you know you have like their electrolytes so what's going on their blood so like hemoglobin so how much like red blood cells and stuff like that and also white blood cells all this blah blah it's kind of boring stuff but it's it's cool stuff to me um and all that kind of stuff and you write all that stuff down the main reason you write this stuff down is of course to take care of the patient but you know you're not especially as a med student you're not really doing much is when the supervising doctor asks you a question you hopefully have it written down on here or it's in your head so you can answer that question this is my new imaginary warning light. Whenever it starts blinking, a situation has 10 seconds to resolve itself before I flash white with rage and kill someone. 
So we'll go either at a table and talk about each patient on the list, or we'll walk around the hospital and see each patient, but we'll talk about them before, then we'll all go in as a team. And on the team, it's like a crazy amount of people. There's a third year med student, there's the fourth year med student who's me, uh, there's two first year residents or interns, uh, there's a second or third year resident, that's like the supervisor of our team, and then there's the super doctor, the attending doctor that kind of runs the whole team and is responsible for all of the decisions. Okay, but yeah, seriously, I gotta, I definitely, definitely gotta go now. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get out of here. I don't know. Let's, of course, right when I'm. Hey. Yeah. What's the problem? There's less stuff going backwards, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the way now, so we can talk about it later. Okay. The third year med student. It's her first week. She's calling me, asking me questions. I hope I gave the right answer. I think I did. I'll check it later. Um, but yeah, now I, now we now we got it. <laughs> I'm getting close, but I figure I have some time. Couldn't talk to you guys while I walk there. So what are the kind of people that we see like on the cardiac service? I guess the people I'm following, and of course I can't say too many details, but um, like one person has this pericardial fusion, um, which is pretty interesting. So basically a pericardial fusion is when lots of fluid accumulates kind of around the heart. And the issue with that is that it can kind of mess with the way the heart beats. And so if you have this effusion and it mess... Oh, look at right to your friend. What are you doing? Are you running? No, Harry, Jake and I are about to go down to Charleston. Oh, bachelor, bachelor party, right? Yeah. Have fun, dude. Great to see you. See you, dude. Yeah. Do you okay? Are you okay appearing in the vlog? Yeah, so, so that's bad because it can mess with kind of the, the, the physiology of the heart, right? Because if it can't put pressure properly in proper places, it can't squeeze blood properly. Uh, but most people, honestly, like 90% of the people I'm seeing just have bad heart failure. So bad heart failure can be for a couple different reasons, but they just can't get enough blood, oxygenated blood to the right parts of the body. And what happens a lot of time is they start to accumulate fluid. It seems like a lot of this is accumulated fluid, but they'll accumulate fluid like in their legs and the bad one, right, is around their lungs because that messes with how they can breathe. So that's pretty much most of the people I'm following. And of course, I would love to bring you guys in the hospital, but I don't think patients would like that. All right, definitely got to put you guys away now. I'm starting to see people that I know. Now, I've been doing this before Amboss sponsored me, but Amboss is nicely sponsoring this video. But a lot of times what I'll actually do before I actually get into the hospital is switch the application, the Amboss Knowledge app, to clinical mode. And then the research what I should know about these patients I'm going to be presenting on. Like right now, I'm hidden away in like a little nook of the hospital and researching congestive heart failure or CHF and what I should order and what the recommended treatment is so I can look like a superstar when I'm presenting to my like residents and attendings. Okay, more on Ambos later. Uh, now I actually have to go see some patients. Six and a half hours later. So I just picked up this awesome sandwich, but I've got to do a quick costume change because basically I got pulled into this cabbage surgery, which is a cool surgery I'll talk about later. But yeah, I have to rush to eat food, change into different scrubs, because only certain scrubs are allowed in the OR. And then after that, I'll go home. But apparently this could be like a five to eight hour surgery. What's going on? Uh, but I'll update you guys as soon as I sit down and eat, scarf this food down and change. Okay. So the, uh, the surgery got canceled and there was an MI, so we had to go to the cat lab. I'll, t I'll tell you all about it real, real soon. Okay, so I was sitting down, I was ready to go. I put it on my special scrubs, you know, cause you gotta wear these certain special cross scrubs to go into the, uh, the Jefferson OR, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I was getting ready to go and then they're like, come to the ED, there's a patient with like a potential heart attack. And I was like, okay, I'll come see what's up. Um, I'm not doing anything, of course. It's just for interest for me to come see as a medical student. Um, and I'm like literally about to go see the surgery. 
So I come down to the ED, we talk to this patient, turns out she is having a heart attack. They see some like ST change, they see, they don't see ST changes, sorry. So it was an end STEMI. So they see troponin changes, um, but no changes on the EKG. So, you know, it's not a STEMI, so it's not a huge, crazy, major heart attack, heart attack. Uh, but it is still, you know, a heart attack. So what this patient had was an acute coronary syndrome, right? But we didn't know if this was so, so bad that the patient had to go into surgery right now, or we could send them home on some Advil or something like that. So what I did while the attending was actually talking in the emergency room is I actually pulled up my phone and I went to uh, search ACS in the Knowledge app and I saw this amazing thing called management. So what I love to do is when I'm on this like Amboss Knowledge app searching is I'll swipe over to the media tab and I saw this magical chart which I instantly screenshotted and was like zooming in around as I was remembering the information that we learned from this. And I said, um, uh, maybe the patient needs a PCI because of ischemic ECG changes and refractory chest pain. The attending was like, what the heck? The residents were like, what the heck? And it was like, bam, gold star, bam, gold star. Seriously, simply just searching the Amboss Knowledge app has made me look like a champion in the hospital and I'll be like always using it. My attending doc physician is great. He's like an intense guy, but he's like, I, I like him a lot, but he's like, he's like, okay, don't worry. We're going to get you to the cath lab. Like if you were my mom, I'd want to go to the cath lab. And, and anyway, so I got to see the catheterization, which was basically they put again these wires through the 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 the, uh, the vessels that supply the heart, right? Because your your heart supply your heart supplies blood to the rest of your body, but then you also have vessels that need to supply your heart, right? Because your heart's a muscle and it needs that oxygen, it needs that to make uh, ATP to make energy to squeeze the heart, so your the rest of your body can get blood. So uh, we get into the cath lab and they're like. They're, they're getting the lady ready and all this kind of stuff. And you see this big, cool screen. And on the screen, it's like a constant x-ray kind of thing. So you see all the like arteries of the heart and you can see everything. So they're shooting stuff through the arteries of heart. And then there's like this one section that is a little bit tiny. Like normally you should have a nice long kind of tube like this, but it's like a pipe. And like the pipe is like pinched a little bit right there. And that's not good because that's, a, you know, a bad thing. So the the interventional cardiologist is like, oh, that's like a 90% occlusion of the right dominant circumflex uh, artery, whatever. So the right, domi the right dominant circumflex, so circumflex artery. So it was an occlusion of the circumflex and he's like, okay, we're gonna stent it. So what they do is they take a little wire in and then on the wire, there's a balloon uh, for this. I think it can change depending on the case, but they put the wire and then they, they put the balloon over the wire, they inflate the balloon, and then they put a stent, which is like a little metal thing with some drugs on it so it doesn't re-clot over that wire again. They add the stent there, and then they even re-ballooned it again. And it went from a little thing like this to like a nice big open uh, artery, which is, which, is, uh, which is a nice big open vessel, which is, which is great. Um, so yes, yeah, she went from someone with like a 90% occlusion to like a 99% not occlusion, which is just amazing. Uh, amazing stuff, but it was uh, just cool, exciting, like standard bread and butter, like heart attack kind of thing in the in the hospital today, which was which was really really cool. It's five twenty one, five twenty one. So you know, I got some energy, I got some excitement here. I got to kind of debrief a little bit, so I'm gonna go for definitely go for a run. But I think I've shown you guys way too many running kind of things, um, so I'll probably just end it end the uh the vlog action here but yeah um that is it uh thank you thank you thank you so much for watching remember smoking is bad and i will see you on the next one